I'm just taking off right now on the Colorado road trip that I told you guys about in the last video. It's actually overcast and a little bit chilly here in Orange County, where I'm leaving from, just south of Los Angeles. Uh, this is very different from what the rest of the ride is going to be like. I've been checking the weather, and it seems like as soon as I get out of Southern California, it's going to be 100 degree temperatures pretty much for eight days straight. Which will be rough since I'm doing, uh, I'm expecting to be doing about 400 miles a day on average. I haven't done the exact math, but it's going to be something like that. Uh, not to complain too much, I do expect to have a good time. I think it's going to be awesome. And uh, I want to give you guys a little bit of uh, an idea of what this trip is all about. Basically, uh, as I mentioned in, in the previous video, uh, I just wrapped up my master's degree finally in computer science after a little over three years. And I just landed myself a job. And over the course of those three years, I sort of found myself slowly becoming more and more having a romanticized idea of motorcycle touring. And I did one tour just to kind of get my feet wet where I camped my way up the California coast. And I have another video series where I talk about that. Uh, not just where I talk about it, but where I actually do it. It's like a, something like a 20 part series. I documented that trip extensively. And it was a great time, but since going on that trip, I haven't had the opportunity to do another motorcycle trip for about two years. So this is my first motorcycle tour since then. Same bike, lots of new upgrades since then. So it should be a little bit more comfortable of a ride. I've got much better equipment for carrying gear. Uh, I've got a much nicer, bigger windscreen in front of me. I've got nicer bags on the back. Uh, it just it should be better overall in that respect, although the weather will be rougher. So anyways, uh, like I said, it's been two years since I went on a motorcycle tour. Uh, I do want to document this tour because I love moto vlogging, as you know if you are here on this channel. You should be aware of that. Uh, but uh, point being, I hope to document a little bit less, <laughs> uh, uh, what call it? I plan to be a little bit less overzealous with my documentation of this trip. Uh, I think on that first trip I felt a lot of pressure to make a good vlog out of it, so I put in a lot of effort to try and make every minute of it interesting and memorable and came up with topics to talk about, even if there wasn't anything I really needed to talk about, which made it feel a little contrived even to me. But on this trip, I'm really just going to try to, you know, I'm going to run the camera constantly as I always do, just as a sort of a liability cam. But uh, in terms of documenting the trip and making a vlog out of it, I'm going to try and just record memorable moments and share those and not try and really overdo it. Because I got to tell you, just the editing alone on the Cali Coast series took eight months and that kind of effort isn't worth it to basically build filler episodes on a trip where the actual highlights of the trip themselves really only occupied a you know a couple hours worth of footage so that's the story of this colorado trip uh should be a good time i'm just on my way to the freeway now i'm gonna try to remember to keep the vent closed while i'm recording so you can hear me uh, I hope that the battery on my lav mic doesn't die. It may or may not last the trip. I might just buy another one to uh, uh, make sure that I can get through the rest of this uh, without the mic dying. But we'll see. That's boring stuff. In the meantime, uh, let's uh, jump on the freeway and get underway. Today's going to be probably the most boringest of days going from Orange County to Phoenix, Arizona, which is 350 miles pretty much riding just in a straight line through the desert. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. I do have a plan. If I do end up needing to implement it to deal with the heat, I will explain it further at that time. All right, catch you guys on the flip side. Peace. Still plodding along through Southern California here. We got the, uh, I'm sure you guys are well aware that we have world-famous, horrible traffic, and luckily motorcycles can legally lane-split or filter here, 
Yeah, well, what's the one thing that's going to be interesting about this trip for me is that it's going to be my first time riding a motorcycle outside of California. And every place I'm going, it's going to be illegal to lane split. So it's going to be my first time sitting in traffic on a motorcycle, unable to filter to the front. And I'm not looking forward to that, but it'll be an interesting experience. Something that's really ironic to me about that is that all the states I'm going to be visiting, with one exception, are hardcore, uh, right-leaning kind of states. And it's ironic to me that those are the states that are clinging to this, uh, you know, actually it's, it's ironic because they're clinging to a, a nanny state notion of telling people how they can ride motorcycles. Like, they're ignoring the fact that it's A, safer for motorcyclists, B, better for congestion, C, better for the motorcycles themselves in the heat. Like, there's just so many, there's literally no reason that motor, motorcycles shouldn't be allowed to filter, except if you're jealous and you're a car driver and you just hate seeing the motorcycles slip past you in traffic. And that's the only only reason I could think of, because all of the science, you know, points in the direction of motorcycles being able to filter, which is really upsetting to me. So I'm jumping up onto the 10 East now, and this is the freeway I'm going to be taking for the next 320 or so miles straight. This is going to be the long, hard haul. I've done just over 100 miles so far, 113.2 to be precise. That has landed me in uh, Indio, California. The weather has started to warm up a bit, which I'm quite happy about. Actually, that first stretch under the clouds was so cold my hands were almost numb with it. And it was really windy too, coming out of the clouds, like I was going through I'll try to post up a clip of the windmills I rode past here. It's no surprise they decided to throw windmills in there because it's a heck of a little breezy area. But I'm going to take a stop here to stretch the old legs, grab some gas, because it looks like the next major city stop, well, major city stop is going to be Blythe, which is another 100 miles away, and this bike only carries 4 gallons, doing 50 miles a gallon or so, so two, doing over 200 miles on one tank is probably not going to happen, so I'm going to stop here, grab some gas, we'll keep on going from there. Making my second stop here at a Chevron in Blythe, California. Uh, just a little over, maybe around 225 miles now into the trip total and starting to really feel the miles under me actually not used to doing this kind of mileage also starting to feel the heat a little bit and definitely feeling the wind a couple of times the lesser rider might have been blown out of their lane or in a situation of grave misfortune off of the freeway completely so Hanging in there for now. Take a little break here, grab something to eat. And make our merry way. I did just realize, by the way, that I'm using, you know, I left, I have two mics on this helmet. One's a lavalier mic, which is really great for filtering out wind noise. The other is like a cheap, super cheap, garbagey uh, eBay slash Amazon uh, plug-in microphone with no filtering on it whatsoever. The sound's not as good, but it's more reliable, and I can use it forever without fear of the battery running out. So that's the one I've been using, and that was by mistake, but now that I've noticed, I think I'm going to leave it that way because it is more reliable. So I'll just have to make an effort to uh, try and do any vlogging that requires any kind of narration over it at low speeds so I can make this work because I just don't want to be recording with the lav mic and then have it die. So, anyway, lunchtime. So with the heat starting to get me down, I'm resorting to my anti-heat measures, which basically equates to pouring water all over my jacket, really properly soaking the damn thing from top to bottom, inside and out. And 
I guess one cup's not going to be enough, so I'm going to go get a second one. But when you do this, when you actually soak your jacket down well enough, uh, when you start riding, even if it's really, really hot out, like 100 plus degree temperatures, uh, it starts to feel like legit air conditioning. It's really nice, and it lasts like a half an hour or more. I've done this before, so I know it works. I'm not just doing something silly on a whim. It may seem silly, and maybe it is, but it does work. This is going to actually be my last stretch, my last big push out to Phoenix, because I just got gas as well. And the my tank holding 4 gallons, 50 miles a gallon, I've only got like another 150 miles to go. So this amount that I have of gas should get me the rest of the way to Phoenix. So I may end up needing to make one additional stop for, you know, to wet my jacket down again so I can survive the ride in the heat. So I'm really, I am really starting to feel it, so. Pro tip, if you are ever going to join me in this technique, maybe I did use too much water, but anyways, pro tip, if you are going to try this, Make sure your electronics are out of your pockets before you do it. Oh yeah, it feels good already. Very nice. The real killer today, if I may be honest, is actually not the heat itself, but the, uh, the wind. The wind is killing me out there. Because, you know, if you're doing 80, I don't know the exact math, so I'm not going to try, but basically it makes it a lot worse, a lot drier, a lot more strenuous, makes it a lot rougher of a ride. Like if it was just the heat, I think I could deal with it. Sorry, plugging in all my stuff here. But yeah, if it was just the heat, I think I could do it without any real problem. Because I am accustomed to riding in this kind of weather, living in Los Angeles. We do get 100 degree weather fairly regularly. But when you throw these desert crosswinds in there for three or four hundred miles at a time, it weighs on you pretty heavily. It's definitely fucking hot enough out. That idea with pouring the water on did work, but not for as long as it has in the past. Not as long as I expected it would. Certainly not as long as I had hoped. Burning up, I only made 45 minutes. I could keep going longer, but figure I'm doing the right thing by taking it easy. Have another quick break here. And this time, I'm going to do a better job pouring water on myself because when I stopped at the Burger King back in Blythe, uh, I didn't really properly soak the whole jacket. I whoa. Didn't really soak the whole jacket. I only really got the front and the back. Didn't do the front that well, so I'm going to make sure I get the front and the back and the sleeves this time. Get a good proper soaking. God damn it, no lane splitting Arizona, you piece of sh. Well, I think I'm technically in Phoenix right now, but I've got to get to the other side of the dang city, so it's going to be a while before I consider myself arrived. Fuel light came on though, so I'm going to stop for another gas and probably have a look at this helmet, actually, because caught something pretty huge on the visor earlier. Whatever it was is dead now, but I want it off of there. Motherfucker on lane splitting sack of shit. Stupid cock on lane splitting motherfucker. Drive a truck through this. 